Hello everyone. Thank you for watching this video. Also thanks uh, to the organizers for the invitations. My name is Nong Adrit. I am a research scientist in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Columbia University. In this talk, uh, I will give an overview of our research related to modeling of complex uh, materials for energy applications using uh, the machine learning framework that we develop and also uh, make available to the scientific communities. Many material properties uh, such as the stabilities, structures, or reactivity are determined on the electronic or atomic scales. Density functional theories, or DFT, is based on the first principles and gives robots uh, predictions for a small structure model with a few hundred atoms. For properties for nanostructures and for molecular dynamic simulations, DFT uh, is computational too demanding. We are uh, developing machine learning models which is uh, efficient and accurate for such applications. And for larger scales, uh, we apply lattice models. In this talk, I will focus on the intermediate scales and machine learning potentials. Many aspects of batteries are too complex for DFT. Consider these two examples on the left. You can see a beautiful stem uh, figures by Dr. Daphne and Dr. Meng as uh, groups with interface in a solid state batteries, lithium cobalt oxides and uh, lipon solid electrolytes. On the right uh, is a cryo-TM image of a silicon anode from a recent work by Dr. McIntyre and Dr. Uh, Suez uh, groups at Stanford. Both systems show nano structures features, solid-solid interface, and amorphous phases. So these structures and phases are important for the properties of the batteries. But modeling such a complex and structures with first principle DFT is very challenging. During the last 10 years, I have been working on an alternative modeling approach for complex materials. Together with many other colleagues, we are developing a machine learning potentials based on uh, artificial neural network. The technical details, uh, you can uh, look to our original publication here. In this presentation, I will give only on the higher level of the method. We use machine learning for the interpolation of DFT to uh, develop or to construct uh, a continuous and efficient and accurate potential energy surface. The resulting of machine learning potential can then uh, be used in molecular dynamics or MD or Monte Carlo simulation here in MC. Our approach uh, uses a new network for the interpolations because they can be highly accurate. The models for, as a descriptor or the features for such a models, we need only atomic positions and they are reactive and four dimensional. Um, but uh, for the constructions, it takes a bit of effort and also needs some time or needs uh, to make sure and to validate them if it's really accurate that you can use in applications. This is an example of neural network fitting we train a neural potentials on the different data. For example, DFT. Here I show uh, two simple examples. On the left hand side, water dimer, and on the right hand side, high dimensional uh, copper gold crystal structures. So you can see uh, on the right hand side, for example, the energy volume curve of three different uh, types of copper gold uh, alloy crystal structures. In both cases, the symbol show DFT reference data and the solid line show new network potentials. And before uh, new network fitting, we introduce random parameters. And after a few iteration of training new network, so we can see that new network can really interpret uh, the reference data accurately. So the conclusion is that the new network potential can really learn the relationship between the structures and its energy. So historically, the computational efficiency of machine learning potentials decreased with the number of chemical species. Recently, uh, we developed a new shape shape descriptor or shape shape polynomial expansion that can be used with any number of chemical elements 
with the same efficiencies and high accuracy. We test these models with up to uh, 11 chemical species for uh, oxides, tangible metal oxides, materials, and molecules. Our methods and models can be used now for any kind of complex materials. The usual approach is to construct uh, neural potentials by iterative refinement of reference data set. In the machine learning it, uh, literature, this is often called uh, active learning. We start with an initial reference data set, for example, DFT or even higher uh, accurate methods, and then train a preliminary neural potential. This potential is used then uh, in MD simulation and selected structures along MD trajectories are, are recomputed with DFT. If the network predicts uh, very different, for example, energies or forces very different from the FT, then the structures can go back and train again in the training set. If the initial data set that we have is, is uh, diverse enough, the accuracy of neural potentials will improve uh, as the data is increasing. Um, the training neural potentials will also require some expert knowledge to prevent, for example, overfitting or extrapolation. So we have to make sure that the potentials are robust and reproduce the FT of our applications and the physical properties prediction that's close to, uh, for example, experimental data. If the structure is very different from the structures in the reference data set, the neural potentials might uh, uh, extrapolate to unphysical results. So we introduce a few methods to uh, check this. For example, introduce the uh, uh, early stoppings and also use more information, uh, gradient information, and also really try to uh, introduce some kind of like a output of extrapolation warning during MD simulation, for example. The neural potential method is implemented in our free and open source software packet, ANET. Our sub software was the first publicly available implementation of the method, and it is free to download in this website. ANET also provides a, a library that can interface with standards, for example, uh, Monte Carlo and MD simulation packet, for example, ASE, LAM, and Tinker. So now let's take a look at the research example. Over the years, we investigated different research questions in energy conversion, also energy storage. In catalysis, we investigated, uh, for example, metal support interactions, solvent effect, and active size in oxides. In batteries, we simulate the structures and lithium transport in amorphous and nano structures phases. I will go over uh, three short examples before spending more time on our work on silicon anode. This is an example this related to energy conversions to synthetic fields. Metal oxide interface are also important for batteries. Zinc oxide supported copper is a catalyst for methanol synthesis. It is known that copper interacts strongly with the zinc oxide support. We used machine learning models to simulate a couple of nanoparticles on zinc oxide with around 8,000 atoms in total and at high temperatures, for example, 1,000 Kelvin, but compared to the experiment is around room temperatures. So this model uh, that would not have been possible with the FT and our simulation showed that the copper cluster sinks into the zinc oxide surface and form a, a pyramidal shape. This is in agreement with the STM images from our collaborators. Another example, copper gold alloys are good catalysts for CO2 conversion, but only when they are synthesis in aqueous solution. We understand now why this is the case. Our Monte Carlo simulation show that uh, copper gold particles are gold terminated in vacuum, but uh, in water, a mix of copper and gold is presented at the surface. This is true for nanoparticles and for extended surfaces that you can see here. So the synthesis conditions are also important for batteries materials. Amorphous phases are also challenging for the FT since extensive sampling and large structure models are needed. Together with uh, Dr. Lasivita, 
We use a combination of a machine learning potentials with a genetic algorithm to sampling structures of amorphous uh, lipoid solids, so electrolytes, with very different uh, nitrogen contents in many different compositions. After this structure search, we, uh, with uh, machine learning potentials, we then use the important structures to run long in the uh, episode in the simulations to predict the diffusivity. Our simulations show that uh, nitrogen bridge in different uh, motifs are good for lithium transport, like this shown here in the figures. Here in this table, you see that lithium deposits is generally higher in lipon than in uh, Li3PO4. In addition, the deficits increases with the con uh, concentration of bridging and atoms in the structure uh, that we were investigating. I would like to spend a little bit more time to tell you about our work on uh, silicon anodes. For the next generation batteries, amorphous silicon is a prospective high capacity anode materials uh, to replace graphite. We train a neural network potential to reproduce all of the lithium silicon ground state structures and also amorphous structures. Here on the left, the phase diagram of the different lithium silicons is shown. The NN potentials predict the same projectors and energies as the FT. On the right, the predicted voltage profiles from our calculations are in good agreement with experiments. Understanding lithium transport in amorphous silicons based on simulation require a large structures models because of complicated amorphous phases. So we validate our N and potentials for lithium diffusion paths. As you can see here, uh, the agreement between N and potentials and the FT is excellent. Also a com comparison of the energies at the beginnings and at the end of the two nanosecond long MD simulations. The potentials performs also very well in MD simulation. Using validated lithium silicon neural potentials, we simulated the lithium extracts from large uh, 12,000 atoms nanoparticles with MD simulations, which is shown here on the top. We also perform N and MD simulations of bar structures at different temperatures and to estimate the lithium deficits at room temperature using the Arrhenius uh, extrapolation. During the delitiation process, the silicon form start from isolate structures and then form cluster and then or network as the lithium contents are decreasing. We then perform five nanosecond long N and MD simulation with different lithium contents. The composition of largest uh, structures was uh, lithium 480 atoms and silicon 128 atoms. We found that the ratios of lithium silicon between uh, 1 to 2.25 show the highest lithium deficiencies and the silicon form clusters like you can see from the previous slide here. This is the ratio 1.0 and this is 2.5 and silicon form cluster here. So the predicted uh, deficiencies between 10 to minus 11 and 10 to minus 14 square centimeters per second are in good agreement with experimental um, measurements from the iterators. We learned from N and MD simulations that silicon clustering is good for lithium transport. So we think further, are there any dopant species that bind strongly with silicon but not with lithium and would promote silicon clustering? So we perform automate DFT calculations to search for suitable dopants with 3D and 4D transmitters and lanthanide species. To assess the silicon and lithium bonding, we compare the energies of two type structures, one with the uh, dopants surrounded by uh, silicon and the other one uh, dopants surrounded by lithium. As you can see here from our search, uh, niobium, uh, lanthanum, and cerium looked promising. So we investigated further. We consider these three elements for the, uh, for the dopants to stabilize the silicon clusters. This slide shows that the FT geometry optimization show that these dopants give silicon cluster with the dopants in the center. 
to test if the dope lithium silicon alloy really have an improved lithium uh, deficits. We estimate the deficits from uh, epinatural MD simulations. Indeed, our simulation predict the deficits increases by one or two order of magnitude. So from literature, lanthanum doping has previously been already tested and leads to an increased capacity. But uh, cerium and niobium have not yet been investigated to our knowledge. So hopefully somebody will pick this up and try it out in the lab. An outlook and summary. So we also interested in another type of uh, solid electrolytes. So we also use the same uh, machine learning model to investigate or to study LCO. LCO is another promising solid electrolyte for solid state batteries. We are currently working on uh, understanding lithium transport in LCO grain boundaries. It is uh, technically challenging to distinguish between bulk and grain boundary transport in experiments. So we want to know what grain size would be optimal. Our LRCO machine learning potentials model can already be used for bulk simulation, but these results are still uh, in preliminary. We are currently still investigating. To summarize, I hope I could show you that atomistic modeling for complex battery materials is now possible. Machine learning model enable the modeling of realistic nanostructures and amorphous phases with near first principle accuracy. For silicon anodes, I show that modeling can identify design criteria that can uh, motivate experiments or guide synthesis. And we have our own tools, ANET, which are in active development and we share with uh, the scientific community. Finally, I'd like to thank uh, the Seder Group from Berkeley for supporting the work on lipon and silicon anodes uh, project. I also like to thank uh, my current uh, research team at Columbia who are now working on the development of machine learning models for energy materials. Xin Wang, a visiting PhD student, uh, Dr. Hao Yu Gao, uh, uh, my postdoc. And not only this, I also would like to acknowledge our current collaborators, Professor Shen, uh, Professor Urban at Columbia, Dr. Liu, Dr. Wang, Dr. Hyberson at uh, Brookhaven National Lab, Mike and Shen, uh, Professor Marklin at Stanford University, Dr. Molawit at Bayer, Germany, Dr. Schieker, also April Cooper and Professor Kresner from Stuttgart University. We also acknowledge computational resources from EXIT and from CFN Computer Cluster, also uh, financial support from DOE. Finally, thanks for your attention. I'm very happy to take questions.